Hi, my name is Dr. Simon Agger, chiropractor and clinical nutritionist. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the common symptoms that we find in whiplash injuries. Um, you've already probably looked at one of my videos on, on whiplash, what it is, um, who treats it, who can evaluate it, um, uh, and all the nuances regarding whiplash. Now I'm going to talk about some of the common symptoms. Right off the bat, headache is one of the more common symptoms that you'll notice with that. For the simple reason that the head has been accelerated very quickly in one direction or the other. Sometimes it doesn't impact on anything, other times it'll hit the steering wheel, it'll hit the side of the uh, automobile, or it'll be a collision um, or, a, or a whiplash injury on a bicycle or during a sporting event. So a headache is one of the main ones, and headache is very common. And one of the reasons this happens is the brain sits in the skull like this and the head moves very quickly forward and back. And if you remember from the other video, it takes place in about 200 milliseconds. That's 200 times faster than that. And as a result, the brain gets to go this way and gets to go that way a little bit. Sometimes that can be the cause of the headache as part of a concussion, which we'll talk about later. Other times, it's from the spine getting compressed in these posterior joints here. This is the front of the spine, this is the back, here's the spinal cord and here's the joints in the back. They very quickly move one way and then the other. And because they get injured in the back through here, they'll commonly refer pain up into the head, especially the upper cervical or the top joints through here, which you can see on the back of the spine here, these guys will refer pain into the head. So not just these structures can refer pain into the head, but also very commonly the suboccipital area, the upper cervical area, will refer pain into the head too. And one very common presentation is the referral into the back of the eye, right? like a retroorbital headache, very, very common with trauma to those areas. So headache is a very common symptom. We see it very commonly in whiplash injuries. It's also a component of concussion that we'll be talking about a little later. Another common symptom is dizziness. Now dizziness can come from many things following a whiplash injury. The head's gone forward and back, but also in this head you have the semicircular canals which control your balance. So your balance is controlled by your receptors, which we're going to talk about in all of your ligaments in the body. It's controlled by your visual cues of what you can see and so that your brain can get this relationship in space and from your inner ear so that when you close your eyes you don't fall over. And those inner ear semicircular canals are these canals and they go this way, they go around this way and we have an oblique one like that. And in here we have fluid and when the head goes forward and back very quickly like this this fluid can shift, it can get disturbed, it can break loose little bones called endoliths that can float around in here and it can reproduce terrible spinning and dizziness in certain uh, positions um, which we correct with the appropriate maneuvers to relocate those. Uh, sometimes it can make you vomit. Um, but that kind of dizziness can be from the semicircular canals which we'll check in our evaluation. It also can be from the receptors getting shaken up through here, because in the back of the ligaments, through the back of the spine, we just looked at the spine, they have ligaments which tell us we have motion receptors and pain receptors in there. And the motion receptors are in all joints. And these little green guys are stimulated when the joint is moved, and when the joint's stuck and inflamed, they're inhibited, they're switched off. So when we get injured, these guys get switched off and our brain doesn't get as much information of what the bones are doing in space. As a result, sometimes it's just enough to make us a little dizzy. And very commonly, when we start working on the neck and reducing the joint restrictions from the inflammation and the injury, then the dizziness goes away too. Thirdly, dizziness can also be from a mild concussion, which we're going to talk about uh, soon here. 
So let's talk about concussion. What happens with concussion is it's not necessarily a structural injury. It doesn't always happen when somebody hits their head on the inside of a car, on a floor, uh, or into another uh, player uh, when they are playing sports. It can happen with no impact. And what happens is the brain moves very quickly. So with or without an impact, the brain moves very quickly back and forth, creates a little bit of swelling. We can get a headache from that, we can get dizziness from that, as well as from some of these other areas. And rather than uh, being stru a structural problem, it's more of a traumatic um, neurometabolic process um, where the functions of the brain and the complex interactions of the brain just get muddled because it's been whacked. And again, it's been whacked sometimes without hitting anything. And it's typically associated with normal CT and MRI scans too. Uh, it may or may not involve a loss of consciousness and it results in a constellation of physical symptoms such as headache, dizziness, some nausea sometimes, some uh, balance disturbance, uh, inability to walk uh, properly, sometimes some fogginess, uh, sometimes more emotional, sometimes just not being able to remember things as clearly as the brain heals. And symptoms can last for several minutes to days to weeks to months to even longer in some cases. And we routinely evaluate for a mild traumatic brain injury or concussion in all of our auto accidents. And uh, 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 if the symptoms persist, we have a network of functional neurologists who are fantastic at identifying exactly which area of the brain uh, is injured and how to rehab that with physical exercises or ocular reflexive reflexes uh, exercises which help. So let's talk a little bit about other symptoms from whiplash. Concussion is certainly one. And we see that very commonly. Uh, it can be very mild, it can be moderate, uh, and it can be more uh, challenging where we have to refer it out sometimes. Uh, other things that we commonly see as symptoms uh, is neck pain, obviously, and Neck pain and spinal pain is very common because the head's been accelerated very, very quickly back and forth. And in these posterior joints of the spine, we've already talked about these motion receptors. The other thing that's in here is pain receptors. And these pain receptors get switched on. These little guys in red. And what they will do is they'll refer pain into typical referring patterns. We talked about some pain patterns referring pain from the neck into the head to give headaches. We talked about some uh, joints referring pain up into the back of the eye. So all these joints in the neck will refer pain, and pain is very common from the joints. Now, when we start working on the joints and getting them moving, the inflammation starts to come down. As we calm them down um, with adjustments which are very anti-inflammatory, the pain levels start to go down. The reason they start to go down is because when these are injured and they switch these pain receptors on, the joints get restricted. Instead of having motion like that, they're restricted and painful. Oftentimes our range of motion is restricted and painful, which is why a lot of times for whiplash symptoms you're doing some ice uh, and pain-free range of motion exercises. As we start working on the joints to loosen them up by adjustments and exercises, it start, we start switching on these motion receptors. And the more motion receptors we switch on, the more they outcompete these pain receptors and the pain goes down. Okay? So as we restore motion, as we get the joints moving throughout the spine, the pain receptors are turned off. And that's important because it's an important part of our treatment to get you back to where you were the day before you got hit or as close as possible to that. One of the other aspects of whip, common whiplash symptoms is jaw pain. One of the things that happens, especially in rear end motor vehicle accidents, when the head accelerates back like this, the jaw stays static. It happens so quickly that the head goes and the jaw lags like that. And as a result, we can get strain in the jaw structures, especially where they hook on right here to the rest of the skull and the hinge area. 
And typically, they will come on usually four to six weeks after the original injury. Usually when the, orig the original injury is intense enough to, to accelerate the mouth and the jaw back in an open way like that because of the velocity of the impact, the pain in the neck is so great that people don't notice they have problems chewing or eating. But that's a common problem. Problems swallowing sometimes because we've got swelling through this is another symptom. So I hope that gives you an idea of um, some of the common symptoms in whiplash. Um, whiplash injuries are, are, are mild, moderate to traumatic where there's, where there's um, bones that can be fractured. But in, in the case, we normally see people, if in the mild to moderate cases and the severe cases we see after they come back from a uh, orthopedist. So I hope it gives you some insight into things like concussion. Remember, concussion is not a structural injury. It's a mild traumatic brain injury, which is a complex process that affects the brain. Uh, secondary to direct or indirect forces to the head. Uh, we, can, uh, so we can experience headaches and dizziness with a concussion as part of the constellation of symptoms. And many times we can experience headache and dizziness as a consequence of a whiplash injury without any concussion. Uh, neck pain is very common. You see how it, it switches on, how it switches off with treatment. And uh, when there's more inflammation down here, you may experience some tingling in the hands uh, and in the legs if your low back's involved. And the um, uh, same things happen. You can see when we get inflammation in the back of the spine here, how close it is to the nerves that exit the spine that work everything. These nerves here in the, in the base of the neck work everything down to the hand and into the middle of the shoulder blade. That's why when the lower neck's injured very very commonly will get referred pain out into the shoulder blade, referred pain down into the arms sometimes. And the same with the low back, when the low back's injured in a whiplash injury, the same thing. We can get pain down into our feet. You can get pain that, that refers around the front of the pelvis to um, very, very common. So numbness and tingling is also common there. The best thing you can do is pay attention to your symptoms. When they start, what provokes them? Use ice on them before you can get to see someone like me to treat them. And uh, remember, if you have any questions regarding signs and symptoms of whiplash injuries, feel free to call our office and uh, contact me. Again, my name is Dr. Simon Agger, and it was good to meet you.